so I'm presenting Pandora box chain project and we are working on making uh, complex uh, computing like artificial intelligence neural networks uh, to be running in the same way as a smart contracts run on Ethereum practically unstoppable uncensorable and uh, if you got some sort of artificial intelligence in the future in the network it can't be killed uh, arbitrary by the humans so it has some you know, uh, trust into humanity because what we believe is that uh, if you can kill somebody the first purpose of that person would be to kill you and uh, it is much more safe for the future of humanity is to create such an environment where humans can cooperate and in economically integrate with this artificial intelligence and we can see this AI as a sort of another type of entity like we have a legal entity, corporations which are not humans which are actually eternal to a certain degree they are not, uh, uh, they can't die like us, so there will be additionally to corporations, there will be artificial intelligences as well and we are making a decentralized platform that can uh, host this future AI and already together we are starting moving into this direction with a small initial steps uh, you can read about our vision more on manifesto.ai and feel free to join to what we are declaring there and uh, our initial steps in this respect are to create a decentralized P2P network which can compute uh, some uh, artificial intelligence neural networks. You can upload your data, you can upload models. There is a free market for data and models. We're trying to democratize these big data and data science things which are owned by large companies today. So anybody can publish their data, publish their models and you as a business, as a researcher, can select, buy them and run the actual computation in a decentralized network not, not in Amazon Cloud, but in a decentralized en environment and the first problem that we face so we, you, we have a different actors like data providers uh, like ML model developers, data scientists uh, providers of computing power like GPUs and people who need to compute something and they buy models and data and run the actual computations. Uh, but the first problem that we face is how we can trust uh, that somebody, some unknown entity with a GPU, have computed exactly that data and that model that you have provided. Because you obtain results, but you can't check without recomputing everything once again. That's, these are correct. And uh, that's why we have developed this protocol which we call a proof of cognitive work. It's the way how we can, with a game theory, create an environment where in a trustless setup you can be sure with a certain probability like 99.9% that the actual computation were done in a correct way. And to do that we need an economy because we are talking about game theory and Nash equilibrium and we need to have economical incentives. That's why in this network there will be an uh, internal token uh, that will create these incentives. Uh, briefly, how the algorithm will work? Actually, it is already working in Ethereum as a Ethereum smart contract. Uh, when you have some data to be computed and you have a model, do you actually have a sort of laser yeah, thing? Yeah, of course. Oh, cool. Thank you. Uh, and you have a model and the data. The data are split into small batches and uh, of the same size. And there is a number of randomly selected worker nodes. It's actually the owners of GPUs that have a full node inside our network. And they are assigned a batch. Each worker node assigns some of these batches. And it runs uh, actual computations it creates a result, for each batch there is a result they are taken and uploaded to IPFS network as well as a model but additionally to that they create, uh, they compute a hash of the results so originally they say this, this results not exposing to the external networks and expose only the hash of the results after that a protocol randomly selects three nodes which we call verifiers 
Uh, okay, they called val validators, but actually what they require is the proper way. And these are recalculating 10% of all existing batches once again. And they get their own result as a hash. And then they compare this hash with the hash from original workers. If they match each other, then everything is fine. The actual computations was done in a correct way. If they don't match, then uh, somebody is wrong. Now, uh, because uh, worker nodes, all of them have a stake, a stake in a cryptocurrency which costs some money, they are responsible with this stake for files computing. So if they reported uh, false results, and there is a high probability that they will be found, because in random way they can be not in this time, but the next time that it will be found that they have reporting the false results, they will lose their stake, which is much higher than the amount of money they earn just by doing usual computations. And this stake will come to a verified node as a his uh, additional source of the revenue. That's why, but how we select verified nodes? Verified nodes are those nodes which have even larger stake. Because if worker node does not agree with this verdict, and he knows that he was right, and probably this is verified, is just trying to take his stake, he can apply for arbitration. And uh, this arbitration works in the way that uh, the worker who applies for arbitration puts additional stake, so this stake will be equal to the verified node stake, it's required to, due to game theory reasons. And three arbitrary nodes are assigned by the network, again randomly, to recheck these results. The most important thing that the client is not paying for such verification and arbitration because the payment are coming from the stakes of this node. In this case, somebody is wrong. Either a worker node has made a wrong calculation or a verifier node is a liar and trying to take his stake. But in both cases, there is some amount of money that can be distributed between the arbitrary nodes. And they just need to recompute once again. And in any case, they get their reward. That's why they are interested in providing a, a correct results. And uh, for instance, they find that uh, it was a worker node who was right, who was wrong, and that's why original stakes come to a verify node, and additional stake is coming to these arbitrary nodes. But let us assume that worker nodes thinks that these all arbiters are not uh, are wrong as well, or arbiters did not reach uh, the same verdict. One, for instance, was thinking about that verify node is wrong, and the other two are thinking about working node, that he is fault. In this case, the so working node can add additional stake upon that, and there is a public arbitration procedure. On one side, we have this worker node with a lot of stake, and on the other side, verifier node and arbiter nodes, who decided that the worker node was faulty. If it was a verifier node who was faulty, then the situation is just symmetrical to that. And any node in the network can, can participate in this public arbitration. He just applies. There is a time period when anybody can apply. It's a sort of like you know public judgment. And all of those nodes are doing recomputing of the same batch, all of them. And they have come to conclusion with uh, the two thirds of the votes who was right and who was faulty. And if, let's assume that the worker node was faulty, then once again, verifier and arbiter get the reward, additional stake is slashed, and stake of those uh, nodes participating in arbitrage who was on the wrong side is also slashed. So, and uh, the others are getting a specific parameter called reputation, which is not token, and you've seen that on the previous slides, it ha uh, it's uh, a property of arbiter nodes. So any vote node in the network which would like to become an arbiter have to participate in public arbitration to earn this reputation. 
So he does this recomputing for his own cost. It's not cost anything to the client or to the network. It's his own way trying to increase his level of reputation and become arbiter at some stage. Why they are interested in becoming arbiters? Because arbiters doing much less computation, earning much more resources for that, comparing to usual worker nodes, which have to run all the computing, all the heavy spent electricity, and earn less. Uh, so, but if, if we assume that there was no two-thirds of the vote, for instance, all, everybody voted 50 on 50 percent. In this case, everybody is slashed for some heat of their stake. All participants. So the, the network wasn't able to reach verdict. The client is notified that, unfortunately for this specific batch, the network wasn't really wasn't able to provide proper computation, and all participants are slashed, so they are all motivated to reach some conclusion, to reach true conclusion. And we have a formal verification of that with a game theory proving that with this setup, we have a mesh equilibrium room for rational players to follow this consensus protocol. And that's how we reach ability to run a complex uh, complex computing in decentralized network without each node repeating all the computation. So, yeah. yeah. And uh, once again, we have a number of different type of nodes. First of all, full nodes which done non-computing and they are not earning anything from the network. Worker nodes which done uh, which are doing all the computing and earning reward both both at the payment from the clients and the at the mining of uh, a new token. Verifiers who uh, earn reward as a uh, payment from the client, so client pays for 110% of the actual work, paying for additional quality assurance, but it's still lower than if you will pay for cloud computing because uh, there is no margin here, first of all, and the second, the part of the reward is coming from the emission of the token and arbiters, uh, who are the most uh, valuable part of the system and they have reward on their reputation. And this reputation is also used to build a bottom layer of the blockchain because this part is an application system which can be implemented as a sort of smart contract. But you have still to have a blockchain that can store the state and changes in the states of this smart contract. Right now we are using for prototype Ethereum, but due to number of technical li limitations and reasons, we, we are in developing our own blockchain solution. And this blockchain would be working on the proof of stake, but instead of stake, we, we will use this reputation coming from this public arbitrage. So uh, here there would be no centralization of the stake, of the um, you know, monetary base in the network because the reputation is not transferable, it's uh, unlimited in supply, in total emission, and if you, for instance, doing a heavy work and earning this reputation, and then stop doing this, uh, other continue to earn reputation, and your, just your share is uh, constantly reduced over the time. And that's why we, we are uh, incentivizing nodes uh, not just to stay on the blockchain level signing the new blocks, but to periodi periodically participate in public arbitrage and uh, usual cognitive computing. So basically that's a brief overview of how we are trying to decentralize uh, computing. And uh, if you're interested, you can track our news in the Telegram channel on the right side or left side, depending on how you look at it, or in Twitter. Thank you very much.